if you are still sticking to just simply the secondary school style of approaching a problem, which means that, whatever, okay, this, you look at this, this is a differentiation technique question. So how am I going to solve this? I will just immediately apply differentiation technique. I don't analyze the situation. I don't think about it. I just immediately try to push. So what a student will do, right, if any one of us, you know, you are still sticking to that. That means you are, you are just applying the book knowledge without, without doing this other part. This other part is actually very, very critical to our age 2 math. So, you know what that student will do? The student will take this because you, are, you only train yourself to do differentiation technique. You don't train yourself to think on top of if I possess differentiation technique, how can I differentiate more efficiently? You don't think about this. So, from here, what do you do? You will just differentiate. Can you differentiate? Of course, you can differentiate. Maybe a little bit more tedious, but of course you can differentiate. We have been doing this over and over and over again. I have enough muscles to do that differentiation. After I've differentiated, by the way, you don't even know that you're supposed to get this. Right? Because you, you only train yourself to differentiate. You don't think too much. So, if you were to differentiate in order for you to prove this, right? After you have differentiated, you don't have this, you know? You will just be having this. And what would you, what would you do? You will differentiate again. Because that's what you have trained to do. You're trained to differentiate one time. Train, again, a differentiate another time. Which means that from here, you're going to attempt to do a d square y dx square. And guess what? You can do it. Because you just need to practice a few more times differentiation, you can actually differentiate this. And what happens next? After you have gotten this dy dx, you differentiate this again. Goodness, it is so tedious. I like it. I'm going to do a d, I get a d square y dx square. I'm going to sub all this thing, pop, put it to the left hand side and try to show that it is going to be it is going to be equal to the right hand side. How am I able to do this in the exam? You can't. H2 math is not just testing you whether you can do things based on the book knowledge. H2 math, the reason why three hours a feel so rushed for us when doing our promo, right, is because many times our processors are not efficient enough. H2 math demand that efficiency. That is why, if you were to ask me one very, very good thing that I can learn from this question is to ask myself, hey, this thing here, this is the key. This is something that was done, not because we are taught how to differentiate. This was something that somehow was done because somebody had done some exploration, analysis, and decided to improvise by doing a square on both sides. You can't really ask people, how, how do you know? When do you know that you're going to square on both sides? When do you know you're going to lawn both sides? When do you, how do you know that you're not going to sign both sides? It's very difficult to ask people about this because it is based on the situation. If you, if you, if you keep asking this, right, teacher, you know, why do you square both sides? You'll never be able to find the answer because it is, if, you, if, you, if the teacher can tell you a formula and instruction about it, the teacher would have already put it into the lecture notes. You think the teacher is so selfish as not to share with you because this is part of your exploration. This is part of how problems is being solved. Book knowledge, and on top of that, we want to acquire the ability to explore, to analyze, and find ways to improvise to solve problems. It is very, very useful. And that is what we are going to make sure that we pick up along the way as we continue to study our H2 math.